10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9, go SpaceX, go NROL 149. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. Vehicle is pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California at 519 a.m. Pacific time. Coming up shortly here, we will be Power passing. Power and telemetry are nominal. We will be passing through max Q, and this is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic vehicle stress. Supersonic. Just ahead of max Q, we do throttle those M1D engines down. Max Q. And there's that call out for max Q. So we have now throttled the M1Ds back up to full power. Coming up next, we do have three events in quick succession, starting with Miko, followed by stage separation and SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or Miko, is where all nine of those M1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle MVAC down. chill. Just heard that we are beginning the ascent chill for the MVAC engine. Of course, we do shut the nine M1Ds down in preparation for stage separation. And then following that, the first and second stages will separate. After that point, the MBAC engine on the second stage will light. And that's sometimes referred to as second engine start one or SES one. Now, this burn on the second stage will last several minutes. And we use it to propel the second stage and the payload to our desired orbit. And in addition to those three major events, the fairing halves will separate from the second stage just about a minute after SES-1. Keep an eye out for those events coming up in just around 10 seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And there we go. We just heard those three callouts back to back. Again, those were Miko stage separation and second engine start one. And again, as a reminder, we will not have any second stage views or payload views today at the request of our customer. Coming up shortly, we should hear a call out for fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we go. We just heard that call out of fairing separation. Both the fairing halves supporting today's mission are also flight proven. One half is flying for its ninth time, and the other half is flying for its tenth time today. And of course, we do attempt to retrieve the fairing halves for reuse as well once they fall back to Earth. And today, we will be recovering them with our vessel Go Beyond, currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. We are just under T plus four minutes into today's mission. The next major milestone coming up in just over two minutes is the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues its journey towards the, of course, I still love you drone ship, which is currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean as well. To start that entry burn, we do light three of the M1D engines. This is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle, and this helps us to reduce the stresses as we re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And this, of course, improves our ability to recover and reuse our first stages. Now, during this entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it is still moving very fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through the exhaust gases of the Merlin engines, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. Now that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, 
and with each flight, that soot builds up just a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle. You can follow along the trajectory of the vehicle in the bottom left side of your screen. As you can see during this coast phase right now, we do just have a bit of a dark view from our cameras. Today's Falcon 9 booster is flying for the 22nd time. This booster has previously supported Sentinel-6A, DART, Transporter-7, two other NROL missions, among many, many others. And again, the payload fairings are also flight-proven, flying for the ninth and 10th times today. Of course, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, and that enables more investment in critical space infrastructure, which in today's case is for national security. And while this booster is on its 22nd trip to space, we are working towards qualifying our fleet of Falcon boosters and fairings to support up to 40 missions each. An increasing Falcon's flight count will provide valuable information on repeated reuse, as well as being a critical element for making life multiplanetary with Starship. Just starting to get some views of the sunrise here from the first stage up in space. Stage one entry burn, start up. And there's confirmation that we have begun the entry burn. So as you can see in the telemetry on the bottom left side of your screen, we are now rapidly slowing the vehicle down in preparation for atmospheric re-entry. Stage one entry burn shutdown. There's confirmation of the end of entry burn. The Merlin engines on the first stage are optimized for sea level. They achieve just about 190,000 pounds of thrust. Coming up next, uh, we do stage have... Stage one, FTS is saved. We do have the landing burn on the first stage in just about a minute from now. And this is the final burn, the Falcon 9 booster undergoes, and this reduces just the remaining speed of the vehicle to allow for a soft touchdown on our drone ship. You might be able to see those titanium grid fins have now deployed and are helping guide the vehicle back towards the landing site. Stage one, transonic. Stage two, FTS is saved. Coming up on the landing burn in just around 20 seconds or so. Again, keep an eye on that telemetry in the bottom left side of your screen. Stage one, landing burn. Stage two, terminal guidance. And there we go, the landing burn has begun. We're now just waiting for Falcon 9 to land on Of Course I Still Love You in the Pacific Ocean, which you can now see there on your screen. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there we go with that confirmation that marks a successful landing of another Falcon 9 rocket. That was the 22nd launch and landing for this particular stage. And this landing marks SpaceX's 384th recovery of an orbital class rocket. And that includes first stage landings. First stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon heavies. And we did just hear that MBAC has shut down as well. This was the 127th mission for SpaceX this year. And great news there, we do have a nominal orbit insertion, but again, as a reminder, we will not be showing any Stage 2 or deployment views at the request of our customer. So with the successful landing and orbital insertion for Falcon 9, we will be bringing today's webcast to a close. Thank you to the National Reconnaissance Office for entrusting us with today's mission. If you're interested in more launch coverage, please be sure to check out spacex.com slash launches as well as follow at SpaceX on X for the most up-to-date information. Thank you.